Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm a screenwriter and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is actor Nicholas Lee. Nick is best known for portraying the character Alex Krychek on The X-Files and Tom Foss on Kyle XY. He's also recurred in the shows The Killing, Continuum, and The Commish, and appeared in a ton of other TV shows, including the recent miniseries The Stand. On the big screen, he's appeared in films such as Vertical Limit, Shattered, and Bad Company. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. The script I want to highlight today is a feature drama called Stay What You Are. Stay What You Are is about a workaholic, former punk rocker who desperately attempts to relive his rock and roll glory days through his daughter's 10th birthday party while his marriage and career hang in the balance. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Nick, thank you for coming on with me today. being recorded by the host and participant. Got it. (laughs) All right, so you've done a ton in both features and TV over the years. When you were first beginning to work on a professional level, what was sort of the moment that you realized it was finally all coming together? Well, that's a really good question. I don't, you know, I'm not sure it's it's ever uh, come together. Um, You know, the the getting of a job and the the struggle in between jobs and I've sort of set out for myself uh, parameters of what I will and won't do. So there's a, things that come my direction that I just say no to because I'm just not interested. Um, I was very fortunate enough to work on some fairly quality programming uh, out of the gate. And and so it kind of taught me that that's sort of where I, I, I want to try to make my bones is, is in quality stuff. So I don't work as much as I could because because I just I choose I just don't want to do those jobs. I mean, sometimes you got to you got to do the jobs to pay the bills, and I've certainly done enough of that. But I'm I'm you know like I said I'm going to be turning sixty shortly here, and and um, and I just don't I don't want to do stuff that I don't want to do. And and because again, you and I had spoke just previously here about about being in a relationship where the other person's a, a, an actor. <clears throat> I think it's been great because now that we have these two babies, she's working consistently, and I'm and I'm Mr. Mom. Love it. Um, something that actually you had touched on before we started recording was uh, you're slurping. It's me drinking tea. Oh, it's okay. I've got my sweet tea here too. So, <laughs> does your work ethic? Would you say it comes from, you know, how you were raised, or was it something else in your life that instilled that? You know, I always go back to I kind of grew up in the the New Jersey punk scene in the '90s. And that DIY spirit is kind of what's put that into me that I can always go out and make it happen to some degree. Um, Where where would you say that comes from for you? You know, it's a good question. I, um, my dad was a really hard worker and when he did something, he always sort of tried to do do his best with the exception of parenting. (laughs) So, you know, I, I, I constantly hear his voice in the back of my head, which is, you know, if you're going to do it, do it right. Right. Don't take shortcuts. Measure twice, cut once. You know, and so that's definitely um, in the back of my mind. But he's not with us anymore. But you know, there's a part of me that wants to sort of do it right. uh, You know, on his behalf. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be around a number of people who have a strong work ethic and embarrass me. um, You know, with their with their attention to to you know with their focus and so you never i don't want to look like a schlub next to these people so you know the the comp i'm a very competitive person and so i i want to get the job as opposed to 
somebody else. So competition plays actually a big part in, in, in my in my attention to detail, shall we call it, or my work ethic. But I, I, again, like we were talking prior, you know, uh, it's work ethic is a slippery thing. And you sometimes you have what it takes and you, you, you got the energy and sometimes you just don't. I think that's a that's a great actually great segue into my next thought, which is, you know, something that keeps coming up on the podcast is that people who have, you know, found some success have done things that set themselves apart from their peers. What's what's an example of something that maybe you did early in your career that kind of separated you from the other people who I'm sure you saw around you eventually drop away? It's a difficult to talk about yourself, you know. It, it 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 it's difficult for me to talk about myself and how I work or what I might do better than other people or not do better than other people. Um, you know, I think that there's. Um, I grew up with a love of TV and movies, like a real love of TV and movies, and I so I knew them all. I knew all the actors. I knew all the stories. I, you know, it was a big part of my life. And and so want, it's, I didn't start until I was 25. I right? started very very late um, for, relative to most people. And so I sort of floundered around in a number of things. I, pl I played in a band for like five or six or seven or eight years, right? We played around town. We did all that kind of stuff. And I was the, the singer in the band. And then I didn't know what, I was very untethered. I was working in a clothing store and I just, you know, I, I kind of had no focus. And then I met this guy who said, hey, you should go meet this acting teacher. And I met her and she said, you should be an actor. And I think that there's, you know, part you're born with part is cultivated through through um you know love of imagination and storytelling and stuff and then there's competition and the the, the need to want to succeed uh, against the person who, who you're up against um and then there's competition with yourself to answer your question i've always tried to bring my own ideas and flair maybe to 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 to, to, to jobs um, it, there's been a number of occasions on, on almost everything I've ever worked on, frankly, where I've gone to the, the first job I ever had, I had no lines. And I went to the director in the morning. I said, you know what? I said, I think this guy, and I'd never done anything, right? I really, I was barely into it. And I said, I think this guy like has, has something to say. And I think that, um, that, that he should speak. And I and she ended up writing me some lines and ended up speaking and ended up having kind of a bigger part than than was there before. And so every job I do, I'll go to the director and say, "How about this? How about that? Do, does this is this interesting to you?" I worked on a really uh, kind of a big film at the time, um, although it's, it's it's not a it's not a great A film, but it's a fantastic B film, which is Vertical Limit. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I remember going to the director and you know he this guy's directed Bond films, he directed Zorro, he was a big A list director. And I went to him and I said, "How about we do this in the scene? How about we? How about how about um, you know I've been doing some research on what um, what happens in these environments where where there's mountain climbing and blah 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 blah." And lo and behold, next day I'm out there, we're at 12,000 feet, we're shooting on a glacier, and there's me doing the maneuver that um, I had learned through through research. So I like to think a lot about the role before I do it. I like to envision the role before I do it. Out of the, that um, that exercise of thinking and envisioning and imagining comes ideas that aren't on the page. And so I always bring that. And I think that might be some things that that, uh, that 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 set me apart possibly from other people it's it's hard for me to, to be the judge of that but i can look at almost every job i've done and and i and there's something that happens on screen that's purposeful and i'll say that, that you know i'll think to myself well that was my idea or that was my idea that was we should have done. you know i remember working on an episode of the x-files and it's kind of a nothing moment really um but i was uh talking to a guy the scene was dark and mysterious and i was talking to a guy up on top of a building it was on the fox lot one night we were shooting at like two in the morning and, and uh and i went to rob bowman who's the director and i said hey rob wouldn't it be cool if like like spy you know spy comes over from the cold and like my jacket's kind of like bristling in the wind you know because like my collar was up and wouldn't it be cool if there's just a little bit of wind he goes yeah yeah not a bad idea so they go down and they get a big fan and they bring it up and they put it up and they plug it in and so in this during the scene my jacket's kind of 
you know, blah, 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 blah. Or there's a, the very first episode I ever did of, of the X-Files and it was, it was, a, it was uh, called Gender Bender and it was shape-shifting. And um, I was having sex with the, this woman in the back of the car and she gets out of the car and I watch her transform into a man in front of my eyes. And so it wasn't in the script at all, but I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we're in the car making out if the windows were all fogged up, she gets out of the car and I go like this and, and wipe away the fog and there on the, the condensation on the window and there's this woman and I watch her turn into a man. And they're like, yeah, great. So we got a kettle and we steam the window uh, before each take, right? So that I could wipe away this thing. And so like, those, are the, those are the things that like, um, like I try to work outside the box a little bit. I try to sort of look at what they've got and I think, how can I, how can I make it more interesting or more specific or more fun? And then it elevates the whole project for everyone involved. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I could take responsibility for that, but I, but I do. It elevates the moment. I sure. think, you know, uh, there's another scene um, where, and this, these are all very small things, and you might not even notice if you're if you're watching them. But you know, like um, there's a, 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 a gondola ride, and the the gondola operator is doing it, and I whack him over the head, and as I come back, I said, you know follow me with the camera because I'm going to sort of like fix my hair after I whack him and it just sort of said like a lot about the character it didn't say anything particularly about the story but it kind of changed the moment a little bit you know yeah. so so I think that's the thing that separates me apart uh, from other people maybe is like thinking past what's on the page and is that ethic or I don't know what uh, is that a work ethic I'm not sure that it is it's it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a need to want to be more involved in the in the creative decision making process I, I think it would tie back to work ethic in putting in the time and you know I, I'm sure you have actors out there who get the script and like you said they're they're just gonna do what's on the page yeah. and you know and and not cool ruffle any feathers and, and, you know, probably do a perfectly fine job, but putting in that sitting down with the script on your couch or whatever, and, and putting in that time and the research, like you said, and what was going to happen up on the mountain. And just, yeah. I think it's, it's what, what's going on is you take things a step further than maybe other people would. And then that makes all those little tiny contributions, you know, the, the, you know, maybe. the fingers through the hair or whatever that, just change it, you know, it informs the character, it makes yeah. the whole thing, you know, yeah. and I think that just goes back to the time and the effort that you took in the preparation stage. That's to do possible. And, and then, I, I, you know, like there's an, without getting, telling too many stories here, there's another scene in an X-Files episode where I was hanging from uh, 13 floors, or it's not 13, but I guess it was, they wouldn't do 13, but 11. I was hanging from 11 floors outside a building, right? And the whole idea is they were going to build me up. They cut we well in advance. We talked about this. They're going to build me a platform and they would shoot it at such an angle such that you couldn't see my feet. And then I would make it look like I was hang, I was dangling from, thir from 12 floors. And I said, well, wouldn't it be so much better if I actually was dangling? You know what I mean? Like, wouldn't that be so much more exciting if you see my feet and you see the 12 floors underneath, right? And so they said, yeah, that, that would be better. And so then they mocked up a whole thing. It was safety meetings and putting me in a harness and getting me outside on a cable and hanging me from 12. Of course, it like scared the shit out of me when I did it. And I was like, well, this is going to be no problem. And then I got out there and I was like, this is not fun at all. Let's get the shot. But, you know, it made the difference. And so that's it's also the it's not only just the thinking about it, but it's also, I think, maybe the chutzpah to say to, to actually speak up because sure. it's not it's not typical you know it's the, 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 quite often they don't you know sometimes they don't want to know right they just want you to do your job shut up and, and leave you know yeah how important would you say persistence and perseverance are to a successful work ethic and a, and a career particularly in the arts well listen in the arts it's everything right isn't it, isn't it almost um everything you know you've certainly got to have you got to nurture your, you got to be born with something, I think, first. I think, I believe. And, and maybe that's just a will to want to pick up the paintbrush or the chisel or the pencil or the whatever, you know. Uh, and that's the thing is, I went to art school before this, right? I wanted to be an illustrator and I, and I ended up not doing that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's everything, really, because especially in this business, 
you know, what do they say? You have to have the, the hide of a rhinoceros and the heart of a child. You know, you've got to be able to take the slings and the arrows. You know, you really do because you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be told no an incalculable amount of times, before, you know, before somebody says yes, right? So yeah, you got to have stick to it, stick to it of this. You've got to have, you've got to be able to say, this is what I want to do. I speak to young actors all the time and they say, you know, what do you, do you have any thoughts? And I, <clears throat> and I say, if you don't really want to do this, get out now, because it'll be horrible. All right, just to wrap it up, is there anything that you want to plug or, or talk about or, you know, anything that you're doing or, or your wife or anyone you know? Well, um, I've got a very small part in it because it turns out that Mike Flanagan was a big X-Files fan. And when we met, he's like, hey, I'm going to get your job on one of my shows. And um, Crystal, my wife, is now doing um, the fall of the House of Usher. And I've got a, a couple of episodes in there where I play for sort of a small part. But Mike says, listen, I want you to, to be a part of our family. So hopefully that's ongoing. And really, you know, what I've been doing, as I told you earlier, is I've is, is bringing up two two three year olds while, while while my wife's on set. Right, I'm a I'm a I'm a house father. Awesome. Well, Nick, thank you so much for coming on with me today. Uh, my, my pleasure. I wish you all the best, and and the show's a really good idea, and, and I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic and check out theartistsworkethic.com.